Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is your show. So. Not my show. Oh, it's our show. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Joanne. I'm Thompson. This is our first YouTube video together officially. Officially, we've done others, but they were terrible, and you shouldn't <laughs> watch them. <laughs> So we are doing, and I tried it, of a super yum box. Which is, which uh, I'm hoping is, is yummy. Super yummy. Yeah. It says these yums traveled all the way from the birthplace of democracy. Which is Greece. <laughs> Greece. We already sliced it open. Right. Um, so... Bring but we in. didn't we didn't secretly put delicious things inside. Like whatever's in here is <laughs> like factory deliciousness. So Uh yep. Alright. And here's a little Ooh. fact sheet. I am I'm gonna you guys are gonna lose me now. I'm reading the fact sheet. <laughs> Yo, did you know Kilkus? The crunchy basil seasoned breadsticks in our box hail from this tiny northern town. Um, and to drink, I have hibiscus tea that I snuck a little mango juice in. And I've got coffee. Coffee. Okay. Um, what should we talk about today? Well... Oh, I guess we're just going to taste. Yeah, I mean, this is an I tried it. Okay. People, people okay. want to hear. We can, we can okay. talk about... I took Greek... And I took ancient Greek in high school, Here. and uh, I did very badly. Um, I uh, I got a terrible grade in it. Uh, my oh. mom likes to say I didn't take Greek. Greek took me. So, so, so it's a big. It's basically a travel sheet, which is There's a lot trivia. of Greek stuff. I guess we could do trivia. Yeah, we could. Oh, with each other? No, with with our audience. Oh, okay. Are we on Twitch? No, we're. This on is YouTube? YouTube. Okay, my mistake. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very technically literate. Um, and then there are... Oh, wait. It, there, it's a, an explainer, basically, for yeah. all the snacks. This basically, it's like a shopping... Okay. It's, yeah. So, so do you want to go by this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. let's go in order. So first, we have the Kritsinaki Pesto Basil. So, um, it's basil... <laughs> Kazoon type. <laughs> basil Pesto Breadsticks. Basil... Pesto breadsticks. And I guess we could talk about ourselves. Alright. So we've been dating for... Almost six years. Almost six years. Almost six years. Wait. But it feels like an eternity. <gasps> oh, wait. Bummer. Oh, we're missing a yum. We're missing a yum. Ah! <laughs> Alright, due to an unexpected quality issue, we had to pull the Mel... Mellow Macarona cookies listed on page 11 of your booklet from your super young box. Not yummy. Not yummy at all. Okay. We discovered so, this issue a few days prior to packing your box. Unfortunately, there has not been enough time for us to source a replacement. Ugh! It's the worst. Currently, we're working out the best fix possible, and we'll have an update for you in your October box. Hopefully, they'll send it to us. Care of Stamps.com. Stamps.com. No, Stamps. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just practicing. I'm doing a little ASMR. <laughs> Pesto breadstick. Okay. It's probably not going to be in focus, but no problem. <laughs> okay. It says, open this box and you'll instantly notice one thing. The unmistakable scent of basil. I can't open it. All right. All right. This is consumer-proof packaging. Aha! All right. The unmistakable scent of basil. That, that <laughs> uh, smells like sweets. It so. does smell like sweets. Oh, yeah. I'm reading the wrong one. What is this? Oops. Oh, this so, is Oriental this is the Oriental Siragli. Siragli. Oh, this is sweet. Syrupy phyllo dough pastry with almonds and walnuts. This is going to be good. When exploring Greece, there are a few things you have to do. See the Parthenon, soak up the sun on the white sand beach, and try baklava. We're not kidding. Baklava is nothing short of a national treasure. You'd be hard-pressed to find a single Greek celebration, be it a wedding, holiday, dinner, or birthday party, without a platter of the syrupy, nut-filled sweet front and center. But rest assured, Greek baklava never gets boring, as there are tons of different varieties to choose from. I want to eat it. I'm, I'm tired of reading. Oh, fuck. We should have ended with this. 
Very good. I guess we shouldn't cut. I'm at poop. I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. No, that makes one of us. I'm gonna get too full. Mm. That was very good. I volunteer as tribute. That's real good. So, it doesn't taste like fresh uh, baklava. It tastes no. like old baklava that was mailed to you in a box. <laughs> <laughs> but but it it's is, good. Yeah, it's syrupy and sweet, and it also... It's different from what you would get in like a store, any other store in America. So it's nice to have. I like the the pressed down texture. Yeah, and it's got a flakiness that's kind of fun. <coughs> it's I don't like how sticky it is in my hands, but other than that. Okay, so. Your mind. Onto um, the basil. Partial basil. Oh, yeah. This is so fun. It's fun. We actually live in um, a part of Queens with a lot of. Greek stores and yeah. we've just never gone into them. Yeah. So I don't know. If we like something enough, maybe we'll go and look for it. Open this bag and you'll instantly notice one thing, the unmistakable scent of basil. That's likely what Alexander the Great noticed too when Ooh, he opened. I oh wow, I yeah, like that's very these. strong. I'm gonna eat this off the ground because I'm an animal. Go. Ooh. Wow, that's real good. Wow, that's a lot of basil. Ooh. Holy crap. So, oh. this is basically, like, it's just like, so, this Kritsanaki pesto basil thing, it's like a crouton. Yeah. That it, like, it's like, if you had croutons as chips and not croutons, and they're just drenched in basil, mmm, man, it's really good. Mmm. Wow. Mm. I like that a lot. Me too. Wow. That's I'm more of a salty snacker than a sweet snacker. Me no. too. No, I'm lying. I'm much more of a sweet snacker. Yep. Oh, wow. I'm a little mad you took it from me. All right, next is Serenata Finger, which is a milk chocolate coated wafer with cocoa cream filling. Obsessed with wafers? <laughs> we sure are. We try them practically everywhere we go. It's not going to catch that. <laughs> But this month, we're even more excited than usual because Greece is where wafers were invented! Mm. Who knew? Ancient Greeks first started cooking up the treats, then called opelios, in 146 BC. They would pour batter between two hot plates attached to wooden sticks. Think of them as ancient waffle irons. Oh. I don't want to talk with my mouthful. Not an animal. They would cook the wafers to perfection, then top them with herbs and cheese. Fast forward 2,000 years to 1970 when the Greek company, Tatus Bingo, created their flagship product, the Serenata Wafer. This rich chocolate take on the millennia-old tradition quickly became a household name across modern Greece, with the four crispy wafers slathered in choked cocoa cream, coated in rich chocolate, and drizzled with even more chocolate. It's hard to imagine Greece ever improving on this recipe. But, mmm, man. Yeah, it's gonna okay. Okay. Going in. So it looks like a chocolate wafer, and it has like a dark chocolate streak on top. Mmm. Mmm. So. So what do you think? So the chocolate has like a. It tastes like milk chocolate. Yeah. Um. You know, I think this is going to be one of those divisions, like, for us. Because, like, you when you like things that are sweet, you are you have that thing where you're like, not too sweet. You like something It's not too sweet. It's not too sweet. And, like, I prefer, like, there's a wafer that you can get in any grocery store. It's the Keebler, I don't know, they're like wafer sticks. Mm -hmm. And they're really good. And I, that's sort of what I immediately mm -hmm. think of when yeah. I eat that. Yeah. And I just prefer that. So, um, it's good. I mean, it, I like, you know, it's... It's milk chocolate with a wafer, so it's hard to go wrong, you know? I see what's next. Tapas chips oregano. Oregano potato chips. You probably want to hold it closer to your face. Yeah. If you end up going gaga over these Greek potato chips, you have one person to thank. Ionis Kapodostrisias, the first prime minister of Greece. Why? Because in addition to building schools, preparing the country for democracy, and creating jobs for women, who is also a die-hard supporter of the potato. When Cappadostrias became prime minister in 1829, he dreamt of making Greece a potato hub. 
hoping it would boost the country's economy. I'm into it. Let's go. I love chips. My number one favorite snack. She does love chips. She does love chips. I don't know if that's exactly a, like a, a major feature though. I feel like if you don't love oh. chips, if you don't love chips, you have problems. Oh. Oh. It has like the te texture of like not it's very late. delicate. Maybe like an Uts chip. Yeah. Yeah, more like a nuts than a Lay's. More, like, not anything close to a Dorito or a Tostito. It's like very, because it's very flaky. Like, it's like a very delicate chip. And, and, the, like, and the oregano flavor is super strong. I don't think it's overpowering, though. I don't think it's overpowering, but it's dominant. Yeah, it's an oregano chip. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I really like that. Next! Oh, man. So I'm trying not to get it all greasy, but I suppose it might be a lost cause. Mm -hmm. All right. Mustakaluro. Soft wheat cookies with grape must flavor. With grape must flavor. Where do you say that? Yeah. Mm. You don't often must. use the word musty to describe good things. Usually, usually it refers to an old basement or someone's dirty socks. Boy, whoever wrote, <laughs> this, whoever wrote this copy, you're killing it. But we found the exception. These cookies are musty for a reason. They're made with actual grape must. Hold on. What is must? It's a thick mixture containing the freshly pressed juice, skin, seeds, and stems of a grape, usually prepared as the first step in a wine crafting process. You could say that must is a must for oh. winemaking. It's only when the winemaker decides the must is ready, a critical decision that affects the taste, that he or she extracts the grape juice from the skin, seeds, and stems to begin the process of fermenting the juice into wine. Fortunately for us, the must made in Kilkis a city in the hills of northern Greece doesn't get turned into wine. Instead, it gets turned into this Mustakaluro cookie with a touch of cinnamon. These soft baked sweets are an absolute must have for any visitor to Greece. What do you think it'll taste like? Well, I don't know, like but a, I must try it. Like a fig newton or something? I don't know. I've never I couldn't I couldn't tell you what grape must taste like, so this is a yeah. this is flavor pioneering for me. Yeah. But it does, I get what they say, like musty. It's like, it smells like, um, so, it smells like my grandfather's house. It looks like a, uh, an oval donut, and the jam is completely encapsulated in the, um, There's jam in there? Hold on. I, I figure, like... There's not jam. Oh! No, it's just like, it just, there's no jam at all. Oh. Yeah, there's no encapsulation. I was thinking... Take a crack at it. Fuck that. Oh my god, I'd rather eat my own foot. Oh. I oh. like it. It's like spicy like a, a pumpkin. It's really dry. Like you need to take dry. a drink right away. Yeah. Um, thank you, Starbucks. 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 Mm. Okay, so next up is Serenata Triplo Hazelnut. Oh. You already eat it? Alright. Wouldn't it be cool? I didn't already eat it. <laughs> Here, you can go and wrap it. Wouldn't it be cool if this deliciously creamy, chocolatey, oh so hazelnutty wafer had healing powers? If you asked an ancient Greek, they'd say it does! According to Dioscorides, a famous Greek botanist, physician, and author of a medical encyclopedia used for thousands of years, hazelnuts didn't just cure nut cravings. <laughs> they cure tons of common ailments. For a nasty cough, he prescribed a mixture of pounded hazelnut and, and honey. That would be amazing if you went to the doctor and he was like, just have some Nutella and honey. Oh my god. Um, for coals, cooked hazelnut and black pepper. Dioscorides even created a cure for baldness. Gentlemen. Charred hazelnut shells were mixed with animal fat and smeared on receding hairlines across Greece. Ooh. Yum. This wafer might not do anything for your luscious locks or lack thereof, but with whole hazelnuts and a rich chocolate coating, it'll cure even the most colossal sweet tooth. Just what the doctor ordered. Here, have a piece. Alright. Break it Ooh. Oh, it's nice and crispy. Ooh, there's a wafer in there. Oh, wow. Oh, it's 
it's interesting because like a hazelnut, it's not. It seems very boring. But it's got a really thick hazelnut texture, mm -hmm. right? It's like it has almost like a creamy flip part at the top, mm -hmm. but that cream is sitting on top of a really good wafer. And then they combine. It's a good wafer. It's a good cookie. And the hazelnut and the chocolate combine really well, which again, it's basically Nutella. And it's it's really good. It tastes like a Ferrero Rocher. Right. But like less intense. Yeah, very different texture too. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is it called? It's called Serenata Triplo Hazelnut. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give that. Four dumplings. Oh, uh, we should have rated all of them mm. out of ten. Let's go back. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll rate. We're new to this. Yeah, we're new. We're new. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're like children, basically. Let me check the time here. Okay, two minutes. Okay. All right. So, Oriental Saragli, I'm going to give that a seven. I'm going to give that a five. Yeah. Um, Kritsanaki Pesto Basil, I'm going to give it an eight. Seven. Yeah. Um, I have high stakes. Serenata Finger, I'm going to give it a 5. I'm going to give that a 7. Okay. Totus Chips Oregano, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm going to give it a 10. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I love uh, Moose Taco Luro. I'm going to give it a dust, 2. Dusty Donut, I'm going <laughs> to give it a fucking negative 1, man. All right. Next is Bruscatini Pizza. Bread crisps with cheese, tomato, and basil seasoning. Ooh, I love pizza so much. Thompson's favorite food is pizza. Yeah, without no matter. Question. Not close. frozen. Yeah. If it's dehydrated. <laughs> dehydrated pizza. <laughs> That's what this if is. If it's two weeks old. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat, I will eat some pizza leftovers. Some. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza in the world. Because we live in New York, which is like I mean, the capital of pizza. Gosh, it's hard to say. I think DeFerra's in Brooklyn is oh. like hard. That's. It's it's not I don't know if it's worth the price because it's really expensive. It's like but like but like you've never, it's extraordinary and like the same guy's been making it for like decades and it's you know it's you go in and you just see an elderly gentleman just like taking his time like pressing the pizza, spreading the sauce, yeah, and, he's and just then like, like working with the uh, dollops of mozzarella. Yeah. On it. oh. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, but it's thirty dollars for a pie. So which is it's, like, which is worth it because like a pie would last me a week if I wasn't dating Thompson. But the thing is also that like in New York, it's it's actually kind of hard to find bad pizza. You'll see a lot of things where people like you know they bitch and moan about like the different levels of pizza. But the reality is that like the worst you're gonna do with New York pizza is pretty good pizza. And, and so the places that New Yorkers love and prefer, the one that immediately left to mind, the best one I've had recently was um, in Bayside, in Queens, was VI Pizza. Oh my. So good. Oh my God. Wow. Classic New York slice. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. Okay. All right. So, back to Bruscatini Pizza. I like how they call it Bruscatini Pizza. Like, like we're fooled. Like, oh, well, I got this in the Ooh. cracker aisle. So it looks like a bagel chip. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Wow. Very plain, but still, yeah. wow, so yeah. much flavor. Holy moly! You have to get one with the flavor dustings on it. Wow, mm. that's mine. Oh man, mm, that's a ten. Yeah. I could eat. I could eat my body weight. That's yeah, really I'm good. Going to. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> Biscuitini pizza. That's the one that we're gonna fight over later. Okay. King soft cookie mm. with dark chocolate chunks. I'm already out. Don't like dark chocolate. Soft cocoa cookie with dark chocolate pieces. Vomit. The worst thing about visiting Greece in the summer: a crazy number of tourists. Check out the trivia. Oh, I guess we, we'll do the trivia later, I guess. Um, the worst thing about visiting Greece in the summer with universal yums? Melted chocolate! Rather than depriving you of Greece's chocolate confections, we've chosen the best non-melty options. Yes, we're making non-melty a word. No, you're not. Um, to include in your box. This decadent dark chocolate treat is exactly that. 
And with dark chocolate cookies accounting for nearly 75% of Greece's cookie market, how can we not give you a taste? I, I could have done without it. Made with delicious Belgian chocolate, along with a bit of salt and vanilla, this soft cookie is loads better than anything you find at a domestic grocery store. We're looking at you, Pepperidge Farm. And now that we think about it, the summer heat might be the perfect way to recreate a fresh out of the oven experience. So if this cookie is still warm as you're reading this, well, you better act fast. I'm, I'm open-minded. We'll see. Don't like dark chocolate. Let's go. I'm seriously loving this box. We're gonna try to save everything. We're not. We're not gonna waste food. Yeah. Hey. I'm just saying. I'm just prepping things that are next. Oh. You're so funny. Hey. You have to try it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. But you know, I do you know I don't like dark chocolate. So. It tastes like brownie goo. Yeah, it's real good. <laughs> no, it's real good. Tastes like a straight yeah, brownie. Yeah, it's basically. It's basically. It's a dry brownie. It's not great. You'll eat this later. It's fun. It tastes good, but like. It's a dry brownie. So I'm for someone worried. like me, where like, I'm just like, I'll be prowling around the house, just looking for sweets, looking for snacks. It's great for like a normal person who like actually cares about the taste of a brownie. Mm -hmm. And like, and like the texture of this is weird. The it's dry, but it's got a solid chocolate taste, and it it basically tastes like somebody um somebody didn't sweeten. Ooh, what is a weird aftertaste though? I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I actually speak to now. Yeah, well, you, you had the deliciousness. All right, the next is Minos Nut Bar Peanut and Honey. Peanut and Honey Bar. Okay. Challenge time. Can you guess this where this is? like a... Oh, you know those sesame bars? Okay. Like at the supermarket in the candy aisle. Okay. That's what this looks like. Hmm. like you know, the sesame? It's like straight up sesame. Yeah. And sugar. So this is from Minos, or from Creep. And it is, I think, Minos was, was it the, it was the king that, the, that Theseus uh, was taken to, and it was Minos's, uh, Minos who put him, it was King Minos who put him in the labyrinth and had him uh, fight, uh, well, was to try to escape the labyrinth, but he ended up killing the Minotaur. Um, I think that's what, like, I, I could be wrong, though, so, all right. I don't like that. It tastes like straight up peanuts, though. Like, the peanuts are great. I guess, but it is, it's yeah. Like traditional candy. You're basically like. You stop on the side of the road as you're driving through the south, you meet a bag full of baked peanuts. That's basically what this is. Okay, so, if you like peanuts, it's great. So it's peanuts drenched in honey. Mm, honey. Drenched in okay. honey, drenched in sugar. Um, I, you know, there was like a, it was like really solid biting into it. It was like yeah, bite, right, biting, right. biting into a human bone. But, um, but. You would know. Yeah. Well, um, we haven't done our cannibal unboxing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's called an autopsy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, all right. Surikake with cocoa cream. Yeah, oh. I've, I've been looking at this all day. Whoa, it's like hefty. It's Whoa. like they. <laughs> this is this, I do not. This is bread. <laughs> this is weird. There's like this bread. Is bread. This is like they've like trapped a cinnabon. Help! Help! I'm stale. This is so funny. Okay, so the best part of the holiday is the sweets, of course. And that couldn't be true in Greece, where this delectable sweet bread sureki is served on virtually every holiday. It's super soft. During Easter, Greek families make the dough from flour, sugar, butter, and milk, then carefully braid it and right before cooking it, decorate it with real colorful Easter eggs. For Christmas, the same dough is artfully crafted with the shape of a cross on top. And for New Year's, locally known as St. Basil's Day, Sereki is prepared as a celebratory cake called Vasalapita, traditionally baked with a coin inside. Whoever finds the coin when the cake is served is bound for a year of good luck. Don't go looking for money in this particular sweetbread, Joanne. Instead, you'll find unbelievably rich chocolate cream, Looks like the holidays came early this year. Super dark on top. Yep, it's very brown. What it, it smells like a Danish. Yeah, yeah, it, it smells, smells like It's bread. got, but it has that, um, I don't know, what is that? It's that Christmassy smell. It's like... It's like spicy. Yeah, it's got like Christmas spices kind of thing. I don't know if it's mace or allspice or something. For sure. You like it? It's okay. It's okay. But it tastes like packaged bread. So it's like... Again, okay. if I'm ravenous for I sweets, I have some like for, with coffee for breakfast or something. Okay, mellow macarona. 
Hey, macaroni. Oh, that might be the one that was missing. Oh, that is the one that was missing. Okay. Cornflake bread ridges. That's these. Okay. All right. Wheat and corn breadstick rings with cornflakes. They look like onion rings. So, apparently, this should be pretty common. When you think of Greek street food, you likely think of kudos. That makes sense. Kudos are an iconic street food both in Greece and around the globe. But even so, they're not the country's most popular street food. The real champ, Koluri Thessalonikis, Greece's deliciously crunchy bed breadstick bagel fusion. Originally a children's snack, it was reintroduced as a street food in the northern Greek city of Thessaloniki, hence the name Thessalonikis. The city's vendors would wake up at sunrise and roam the streets, balancing baskets full of kaluri on their heads. Anyway, let's just see what it tastes like. It's a lot of reading. Tastes like corn. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Like, in a way that like a, a chip is. I would say in terms of quality. Oh, we stop, we stop rating them. Oh, man. Barn. Okay. Um, the ten. Chocolate. The chocolate, I'm going to give a five. I'm going to give a five. Um, Minos, nut bar, and honey, I'm going to give a three. I'm going to give a five. Okay. Surakaki with cocoa cream, like I'm a five. Six. Yeah. Um, and uh, these. These. Uh, let go with a six. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have another pizza bag. Mm. We clearly know which one is our favorite. Yeah. Okay, next. Ooh! I'm excited about this one. This is. Oh, you're gonna like that. Oh, this is gonna be good. Mmm. A Lemono Pataki. Soft pie with lemon filling. Ooh, open that. I'm excited. What comes to mind when you think of pita? Round bread pocket, Greek hero, chips and hummus. This might come as a bit of a shock, but if you ordered pita in Greece, you wouldn't get any of those things. Not even close. And what would you get? A pie. In Greece, the word pita means pie or pastry. Locals use Arabic bread when referring to what we consider pita bread, since so it came to Greece from the Middle East. There are plenty of Greek pies to choose from, including savory classics like spanakopita, terapita, which come with spinach and feta, and indulgent sweet varieties like the honey-filled Milopita. We went ahead and chose our favorite to put inside your box. This is a soft lemon pill pie called the Lamono Pataki. And let us just say, gobbling up this crumbly, zingy yum is as easy as pita. Oh my god, I am so excited. I can't it wait. It smells really good too. Mm. You, you do the honors. Okay. Tom thinks more of a pie person than I am. My pie and sweets. Mm. I'm excited. Mm. This reminds me of. Like the pineapple pastries that we get from Flushing. Mm. I like the pineapple cakes better. Yeah, it's a little dry and dusty. I like the filling. <clears throat> <coughs> I'm gonna give this a six. I'm gonna give it a four. It's so sweet. Yeah, I like the sweet. I was, but um, honestly, it could be sweeter. But yeah, not not a fan. All right, next. Oh man, these aren't just normal Mediterranean crackers, folks. These are elite, <laughs> elite Mediterranean. It sounds like that sounds like it sounds. Oh, I don't think you're gonna like it. Crackers with feta cheese. Yeah. Ooh, crackers with feta cheese and oregano feta. Oh, pff, oregano flavor. <laughs> All right, you feta believe these? Uh, I can't read the copy. It's that's so cute. Come on. Um, you feta believe these. Greek crackers are serious business. The Greeks don't mess around when it comes to their beloved feta cheese. This crumbly classic was practically melted into Greek culture. It was invented there, referenced in Homer's 8th century epic, The Odyssey. 8th century? 8th century? 8th century, like, B.C., I think. It has... It has become a staple in local dishes from salads to pies. It's unsurprising then that Greeks have developed some hard and fast rules for feta making. It must contain at least 70% sheep's milk. All right. I'm not a big fan of feta cheese. We'll see. They're very thin. Mm, pretty good. Pretty good. It's good. It's good for a cracker. It's like mild. 
I think it would be like amazing with a cheese plate. Ooh. Like I think if you had cheese or like with some really fruit, good like or some jam. Yeah, this is like a this. So this the elite Mediterranean crackers. I gotta say, yeah, Joanne nailed it. The the texture is just. This is like perfect cracker texture. It's it's really good. Then you can taste the feta. Yeah. This is a really good cracker. I'm, I'll say a nine. I think solid, it, yeah. solid nine. I'm gonna give it a ten. Huh. I just didn't want to offend my friend over here. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Next. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Oh. <laughs> you don't like nougat? No. All right, so the next one is Mino's Soft Nougat. Soft Nougat with orange and peanut. Um, I like nougat a lot. I like orange a lot, and I like peanut a lot. Um, I don't like any of those Joanne's, Joanne's least favorite flavor on the planet, so I'll let you read it while I unpackage okay. it, since I'm probably the only one who's going to enjoy this. If you've ever had a Snickers bar, then you've tried nougat and peanuts together. Keep that in mind as you bite into this Greek nougat, which is basically Snickers' great-grandpa. Except great-grandpa nougat from Greece has Mediterranean orange chunks inside as well, giving it a unique citrusy flavor balanced out by salty peanuts. It's first of all, it looks really cool. So it has like Ooh, it, it has like, like the wafer, it has like the wafery waffle thing, mm -hmm. but it has like a, a pretty thick cream center here. And it, um... Oh, shit, stop that dirty talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, it smells almost like a cream Is there sugar. an American version of, like, nougat like this? Like know. Toblerone? It's like the closest thing. It's very... I was just... Mm. What a weird flavor. What ASMR sounds. <laughs> what a good flavor. It's really interesting. It's got a really interesting texture. Yeah, go for it. Oh, it's so soft. Yeah, much softer than I was expecting. What do you think? It's more like marshmallow. It definitely doesn't, like the orange barely comes through. Um, it's more like just sweet, like this is- It's straight up sugar. Yeah, this is like a, a block of sugar with like, but it has, it's funny because it has, I don't know if you can see it, it has pieces of orange in it. Like it's, it's clearly got orange, so it's very weird. I like the sound. It has a. You should do an ASMR video eating this. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. If you um, want Thompson to do that, leave us a, a thumbs up. <laughs> Please don't. If you want Thompson not to do it, um, if we reach a hundred likes, Thompson will do an ASMR <laughs> of, video of, of eating this. Eating yeah. that. The same one. The same <laughs> one. one. Yeah. Well, put it in the freezer. Yeah, we get a hundred likes. I'll eat this garbage thing. Blah. And right. other things. Yeah, and other things. Okay. I, uh, this is, I, I've never wanted a video not to get likes more than that. <laughs> Alright. Next. Tata sea salt chips. I mean... What? They knew I'd be getting this box. Yeah, I mean, do we need to read this? It's a potato chip. I don't think so. It's a potato chip. It just looks like a potato. Like this, this is, look at all this text. It's a potato chip. Potatoes. We love Lord of the Rings. That's my favorite movie. That's good. That's good. Yeah. But the thing is, between the oregano chips, yeah. the the feta crackers, yeah. and the, the yeah. it's like this is like Junior Man. I'd, right. I'm gonna give it a, like a like a five, maybe a four. I'm gonna give it an eight. Whoa! Really? really Let me have another one. I like chips. Really? It's just a good chip. Oh man. It's like a little thicker than Lay's. Um, oh, it's like perfectly salty. I'm, I'm gonna give it a three. No, it's mm. trash. I hate it. It's like. Oh, another. And this is a croissant oh. with a. See, I don't like this because it's like a pastry. It's like a, a bakery pastry. So what this is is this might be like Serenata Max cro Max Croissant with apricot filling, right? So if you go to the store and you're like, you know what I want? You know what I want? I want it. I want a croissant, but I but I want it to be prepackaged. It's a Greek croissant. Yeah. It's very soft. Okay. Like you wonder what kind of preservatives are in this. Uh, it looks like mono and diglycerides. Um, 
smells like it's been the high fructose corn chemicals. syrup, calcium propionate, I which is. Right. Not, it's not inspiring confidence, that, that expression on your face. Because you bite into it and it's like air of chemicals. Bah! Bah! Oh my god! What the f- Wow! Yums.com! Hard pass! Hard pass! Bah! Jesus. It, yeah, it's like... Gosh, that's like more chemically... Yeah, really Ugh! Bad. That's like more chemically than, um... Yeah, the pop yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. It's more chemically than pop tarts. It's all mixed. <laughs> I love you. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rest of it's just like, it's just like candy. So. There was a bag, a yum bag. We dug into it. Yeah, that was uh, that was pre that was before Let's try something. said. Alright, I like the pomegranate jelly one. Oh, I really didn't like that one. I didn't have the honey toffee, so I'll take some honey toffee. Okay, this is going to be the last thing. Alright, this last one, you're going to have the ouzo? Yep. Okay. This Ooh. is a hard candy. So this already, the the honey toffee has like the texture of like a, like a, like a sugar daddy. Like it has... It tastes it, like licorice, so... So hard. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> She's not even finishing it. Oh, man. Uh, honey toffee, I'm pretty excited. Cancel. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, okay. This is not my thing. It's not terrible. It's like a mouthful of honey that, like. That's good. Yeah, That's but it's like really thing. very thick, very strong. Well, thanks for joining us. See you at, in our next video.